You know, it's actually obviously a lot easier for me when people come having the value in their mindset already. It, one of the most difficult things is when somebody comes up and says, we knew, need no idea. Can you create a $50 million product for us in a three-day session? To which I say, absolutely not. And if I could, you wouldn't be talking to me because I'd be so wealthy, it'd be beyond words. And so what we see, though, is organizations more and more recognize the value of innovation and new ideas, and they understand that it's not a magic formula. You know, it's, or I say it's not a disco ball that descends in the middle of the room and you go, hallelujah, we have found it. It's really a process, and it's a value system within an organization. Um, I guess like work, innovation will fill the time you give it, and you can't shortchange it, but you have to stop at some point and say, enough, now we have to review everything and really select out of that what's best. And you should spend about as much time on both, half of the, both halves of that equation. Overall, you have to spend as much time going through the output as you do generating the output. A lot of people, myself and a lot of people who work with us are sometimes against the rigor of the process because if you think about it, innovation is about shaking things up and the moment you start doing things in a little bit too, more, too much of a formulaic way, you're not going to be there. So I'm huge on the creative side. The truth is it's a balance between the two. So you know, our, our, our way of looking is this, it's just you spread out thinking, you converge thinking. And you really need to apply the creative element to the spreading out of thinking. You just have to bust assumptions, you have to really look at things from every angle and stimulate it. But then you have to apply discipline in going through all that and seeing, well, what's really working? And then hone it into some kind of communications vehicle that people get. You know, we see things now about groupthink is kind of re-emerging as a concept that we should be watching for. But, um, you know, it really comes from all over the place, uh, <laughs> though I may be loath to say it. I do think that in smaller organizations, there is almost how they start smaller successful organizations is because someone's doing something extremely innovative. Um, but they don't necessarily proliferate that innovation. But they are the, the kind of the, the pain in the sides of large organizations because they can cut away at different little segments. So if you look at something like the beverage world, where you, know, you have huge brands and they really push to innovate and do a lot of work, but then the little upstarts come in and they pick a little area. But they don't, as I said, often expand beyond there. And you also see a difference in the types of industries and the types of companies that are, that are more innovative or more, put more value in innovation is what I should say. Um, some are very much about we do it ourselves and we invent it. Others really reach out and try to go into the marketplace and utilize folks like us or other folks to say how can we stir up thinking, how can we figure out where the next thing is coming from.